how the fuck's it going everyone back today with another video and um yet another one that's not going to be too challenging uh for me to get through today i've had a very very busy day at work um so i figured i would just come along with a relaxing kind of um vinyl update vid slash uh weekly album recommendations video whatever you want to call it i've just got some cool shit to show you um so yeah looking forward to getting into this one I've got um, five albums to show you here, and this kind of wraps up the albums that came in over the last week or so. I got a shitload, so as I say, or as I said in the uh, last couple of videos, I had to break this up into a couple of updates. Um, but yeah, really, really stoked to talk about um, all of these albums. Hopefully, you find some new shit here. I've got a couple of albums that you may not be familiar with. And then perhaps a few that are completely surface level in extreme metal. Um, but regardless, all of it is extreme metal. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting into this one, as I say. But first of all, what's going on in the background? This is uh, Black Moth with their third full-length album, I believe, entitled Anatomical Venus. Um, this one was put out in 2018 through uh, Candlelight Records forgot what the fucking label was there for a second um if you don't know black moth based out of um leeds uk they play a sort of um stoner doom metal um very very catchy and very melodic um it's almost a little bit poppy with the sort of um doom metal guitar tone the stoner metal fuzz if you will um, very, very good. The vocals are beautiful. She's got an absolutely awesome voice. I can't remember her name, unfortunately. Um, I'm hoping that'll come back to me. Uh, but yeah, this band's absolutely wicked. I can't remember if I've actually shown them on this channel yet, but um, can't recommend these enough. Jess and I actually decided to go and see these live. We went to Damnation Festival in Leeds, um, and Jess liked the look of the logo, and we just fancied going to see a band that we'd never seen before and we went along and I've been a fan ever since. They absolutely killed it and every single one of their releases has been fantastic. Unfortunately they disbanded a few years ago um, but yeah they left behind some absolutely killer tunes so go and check that out. That's Black Moth with Anatomical Venus. Uh, please do make a point to listen to some of that shit in the background um, if you like any of that description. <coughs> killer shit. Okay, so the first couple of releases that I've got here are albums that I actually reviewed, so I'm not going to go into any great detail about them. Uh, do go and watch my uh, review videos specifically, uh, because I put a lot of thought into them apart from anything. Um, but yeah, I'll just give you a kind of brief um, overview, and I'll go through the aesthetics of the physical release here. Um, first up, the album that's in the thumbnail, so you were anticipating this one. This is Two Mold out of Canada with their fourth full length album entitled The Enduring Spirit. Uh, this was put out on the 13th of October officially through 20 Bucks Spin. Um, if you don't know Two Mold, they came out of the original sort of um, death metal revival surge, if you will. They were one of the first bands to kind of get this tremendous hype um, that is still kind of floating around them. Um, they played or used to play kind of a um, very groove laden, sort of disgusting, cavernous style of modern death metal. Um, despite coming from hardcore, or at least the, all of the um, band members came from the hardcore scene, this isn't really, it doesn't feel hardcore inspired at all, or at least their early stuff doesn't. It's always been rooted in quite technical sort of guitar work. Um, always been unpredictable and kind of complex um, but not quite on the prog side and then on this one after three kind of building albums that kind of felt like they were going in this direction we got the fully metamorphosed kind of moth if you will of progressive death metal on the other side this is completely kind of technical progressive death metal um, outstanding guitar work on this thing really really technical complex um, sort of convoluted at times it can be very challenging this isn't an album i could throw on all the time by any means unlike their older stuff which i find a lot less challenging and um, if you like bands like cynic 
atheist death slater work they're the kind of lazy comparisons that um i would come up with to this one um derek vella is in this band and um you hear some moments on here the kind of serene ambient sort of guitar moments that sound a lot like his other project dream unending um, he also does bass work on here so if you like kind of bass fretboard noodling then there's a ton of that on here it's very audible and very much at the forefront cavernous death growls fantastic drumming that sounds like it's being played in a garage and just recorded as it is absolutely killer really tidy drum work as well um, not too complex and over the top but the transitions and tempo shifts certainly are that this sounds like every single idea that Tomb Mold ever had has just been bunged into this album. Um, but it doesn't feel kind of messy or anything like that. It's very well arranged um, and very, very kind of sensibly and um, professionally played. So yeah, go and check that out if you haven't already. I'm sure you already have if you're even remotely interested in death metal. Uh, because these guys are absolutely killing it at the minute. Getting a ton of attention. Whether that be for their music or their tiny shorts. Um, fucking hell guys get a grip as in the people who are having a go at them for their dress sense um, I'm not going to go into that at all but um, yeah fucking honestly metalheads talking about fashion um, front cover there shows kind of like an alien landscape this looks like some sort of like alien statue or something all of this kind of comes off to me as a bit avatar-esque the more I look at it and the closer I look at it just with all the like um, extraterrestrial trees and like we've got some alien looking dudes hanging around in these uh, sort of fairy pool looking things with waterfalls and shit just looks very Avatar-esque but this is a lot shorter than Avatar and a lot more interesting let me tell you that shit sucks um, yeah but I love that artwork I believe it was done by Pit of Bones uh, who does a ton of other extreme metal art love the purple logo there don't know who decided to do that but that was a great great shout and um, the title is down below here enduring spirit back cover i've already kind of shown it um but yeah we've got a bunch of like alien robot looking people in the same landscape uh with mountains and shit in the background track listed up top excuse me and this was put out through 20 bucks spin for a single lp this came with a ton of extra stuff um, if I can actually fight my way into this without damaging anyone. Comes with this awesome insert with this guy who's having his like skin vaporized by the looks of it. He's been left only with a bit of facial muscle tissue and his skeleton. So yeah, he's having a fucking shitty day. I think I've had a bad day. Look at this guy. Um, back cover there, we've got uh, the most unfashionable guys in death metal. Um, yeah, cool band photo. Um, with the credits and everything there. Um, inside, we've got a very kind of a flamboyant looking lyric sheet with the album cover in the background kind of faded, really nicely done. What we also get is this absolutely fucking gigantic, if I can do this without tearing it, album cover kind of poster um yeah absolutely ridiculous stuff massive don't know what on earth i'm going to do with that it's probably just going to sit in the record jacket um because yeah there's there's just no way um i'm gonna spend some time fighting that back into the jacket later on um i'll cross that bridge when i come to it but uh, yeah really cool anyway love that stuff i think you can buy that um separately as well if you're interested in just the poster and you're not a physical collector um because not all of you guys are nerdy like us um this came on this beautiful kind of mint green with aqua blue and sort of pink splatter um it goes absolutely perfectly with that artwork um and kind of the color scheme and everything stunning stuff um yeah aesthetically absolutely zero complaints with this thing it's absolutely awesome um but compared to two months of the work this is one i will not return to quite as much just because i'm more into like straightforward death metal i uh, really like that kind of attention to detail with the colored kind of inner jacket if you will um very cool and um, yeah as i say i'm not really a proggy death metal guy 
uh, but this one is kind of on the cusp of my tolerance level for that kind of stuff um, and I love two molds based on sound um, this doesn't lose out on the groove and stuff it just kind of it's one of those things where you get used to a riff and then another one comes straight back in and uh, just rips you straight like apart from it um, but yeah good shit anyway fantastic stuff um, but you already know that because you must have fucking heard that by now um, yeah go check that out the next release I want to talk about is another one that I reviewed. Um, I've just been waiting on the physical copy, and here it is. This is the new Moonlight Sorcery debut, um, Horned Lord of the Thorned Castle. Um, again, try saying that fast when you're drunk or something. Um, but yeah, really, really killer shit. These guys are out of Finland, and they play a very, very melodic style of black metal. Um, this is so zany and over the top and almost daft. Um, this has been described as like, I don't know, blackened dragon force and blackened power metal. And um, it's been compared to like early children of boredom, all of which are pretty apt kind of um, descriptors for this thing. This is very, very fun, very twiddly. There's lots of guitar wankery on this thing to the point of like you don't want to hear another solo for the rest of your life after putting this album on um, if you like bands like Dissection then just ramp up the melody and the guitar twiddling and you've pretty much got this thing um, the power metal stuff or at least what people are calling power metal comes in the form of like the sawing um, mid paced sort of sections but yeah I really get a feeling of like riding in a battle or slaying dragons or whatever um, with this thing. The blackened elements aren't lost here. We've got blast beats, we've got the um, kind of blackened shrieks. There's no clean vocals, so don't um, kind of be deterred assuming that there are some. Um, but we do have a lot of instrumental work on here. So if you get tired by like um, a lot of guitar wizardry, then yeah, this one's probably going to grate on your nerves a little bit. Production's a lot cleaner than on their um, EPs, which were a lot more frostbitten. Um, and kind of on the black metal side um, but yeah they lose no kind of efficacy here um, yeah please go and check this out it's absolutely killer and so much fun just don't take it too seriously and you'll probably have a good time with it um, yeah anyway front cover shows pretty much a horned lord in a thorned castle I guess um, with a guy kind of wrapped up in a vine of thorns here's our horned lord um, and the castle yeah, not more else, not much else to say about that, I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, really like it. Very cool. One of my favourite artworks of the year. Um, we've got like a foil stamp logo there and the title of the album, um, which I will not say again. Um, back cover there, we've got more foil stamping for the track listing. This was put out through Avant Garde Records or Avant Garde Music. Um, this is a gatefold and it comes with this kind of like attached booklet this is all kind of attached to the inside of the gatefold um and it's got a bunch of like band photos in kind of very in a very finnish style lots of like um snow everywhere we've got the lyrics and everything in here as well um yeah very cool and uh, that guy there closest to the sort of spine reminds me of that um sith lord of knights of the old republic the star wars game i think that's the name of the game anyway i cannot remember his name though can anybody tell me in the comments what the guy is i'm thinking of this fella here looks like him um it might come to me uh in a second but regardless i'll stop talking shite um this comes on this stunning black and purple merge swirl whatever the fuck you want to call it um it goes beautifully with the purple sky there up top. Um, I don't have a disc in my collection that looks quite like this. I nearly picked up the green one and I'm so pleased that I didn't because uh, I've got a ton of green in my collection. Yet yeah, that one is fucking awesome. Um, so yeah. That is Moonlight Sorcery with their debut album, Horned Lord of the Thorned Castle. So much fun, um, so memorable. And yeah, please go check it out. Maybe not one for the black metal purists though, um, but not one to be taken too seriously either. Okay, the remaining albums are all double LPs. 
um, none of which I've spoken about yet. So I'm pretty excited to get into this. First up, this is a Relapse Records reissue of Mortician's sophomore full-length album entitled uh, Chainsaw Dismemberment. This was put out originally in 1999 by the same label. Um, Mortician are out of um, Yonkers, New York, and they play an absurd style of very, very brutal kind of death grind. All of their albums are kind of in this vein. They don't change up their sound too much. It sound, this one sounds a lot like their debut, Hacked Up For Barbecue, in the sense that it's got a ton of kind of horror sound clips before a lot of the tracks here, giving it an overall vibe of like a snuff film to me. Um, but it's so much fun. Um, the vocals are completely just absurdly kind of uh, low and guttural. You can't hear even a smidge of kind of humanity in them. They're just kind of grunts and they sound fucking awesome. The guitars and bass are tuned so low to the point of like my house starts falling down if I have it too loud on my turntable. I've never heard guitars kind of tuned so low in my life. If you thought like Electric Wizard had low tuned guitars, put this on and then fucking tell me that because my good god, this is obscene stuff. Um, the drum machine is usually kind of off-putting when it's done in this way because it doesn't sound human at all. It sounds like a fucking machine gun's going off or something. Um, but I happen to like it for this. It just suits the music perfectly. Um, and yeah, I don't know what it is about it. We've got some very chunky moments, very kind of bludgeoning. The mid pace stuff's awesome. Makes you want to scrunch your goddamn face up and start chainsawing the limbs off. Um, but yeah, I love this album. I'm probably going to pick up Hacked Up for Barbecue as well at some point. But uh, this was the one that I kind of um, grew up with. Um, and yeah, it's absolutely killer. Front cover there, one of my favourite artworks of all time, by the way. Uh, shows a kind of a uh, chainsaw murderer um, within his lit porch while a woman's kind of, um, I don't know, tied to a stump with her leg already chainsawed off. I'm assuming that was was her boyfriend, I guess. Um, he's also missing all of his limbs. Um, so yeah, really nice stuff. Love their logo as well. Um, yeah, that, that artwork's just awesome, man. It's so eerie, just the way he's kind of admiring his work there but uh yeah anyway i'll stop uh raving about that back cover there we've got a bloody chainsaw blade with the track listing there each track's like a minute of actual music each um pretty much um hence the number of um tracks here but uh yeah killer stuff this is a gatefold we've got all the lyrics and everything in the center here with the band photos and credits and this came on this very neat kind of blue, what do we call it is it going to tell me royal blue with splatter and the splatter is kind of like dark red splatter it shows up black on the camera but uh yeah trust me when i say that's kind of dark red um again perfect perfect combination with the artwork um, yeah, love that album, man. It's so, so daft. Um, and I've listened to this for so, so many years and been waiting for a repress. So I snagged this ASAP um, and I'll just start picking up their other stuff as and when I kind of fancy it. Uh, a bit like Dismember's catalog. I got the essentials and now I'll just work my way through. This is an absolute must if you like the kind of, uh, if you like death metal or death grind or brutal death metal in any facet. That's an absolute must. That's Mortician with Chainsaw Dismemberment. Next up is an album that I did reference a couple of videos ago um, because I actually got a record by accident instead of this one. Um, but I got the distro to send me this one out as well. This is Trahar out of the USA with their fifth full-length album entitled Vat Galenva. Um, this was put out through Ixiol Productions. If you're not familiar with Trahar, they've got one of the most kind of uh, prolific um, release schedules I've ever seen from a band. This guy's releasing like, um, I don't know, 
He's releasing about four albums a year, plus EPs, plus sp uh, split releases. Absolutely ridiculous. Our guy's called uh, Damien something or other. Um, and this is a one-man project out of Texas. This is very kind of raw, atmospheric black metal. Um, very trebly and piercing. The vocals, as I said in the other video, he reminds me a bit of like a tortured child or something, or a child that's been possessed by something. It's very kind of nasally and like really, really uncomfortable and unnerving sounding. Um, there's some really beautiful kind of ambient passages on this one, but compared to the other one that I showed in the other video, their sixth album, I can't remember how to pronounce that fucking stupid thing. Um, this one's a lot more rooted in black metal, so if the ambience put you off about the other release, this one will probably be more up your alley. Again, very emotive, um, very kind of pretty at times, um, but yeah, this one's rooted in savagery and evil. Um, absolutely love that stuff. Um, go and check it out. Front cover there is showing our guy with like fairy lights again. Very similar to the other cover, so I can see why the distro sent out this one, uh, sent out the other one, sorry, instead of this one. Uh, as I said in the other vid, we've got the kind of vertical descending um, layout for the uh, logo and the album title. Goddamn, think of your words. Um, yeah, really love that layout. That cover's so evil looking and just, that's so dope, man. Um, back over there. We've got, again, like a lantern with some more fairy lights. We've got the track listing up there. This, again, is in that made-up language that I referenced. Um, so, yeah, absolutely zero hope of reading along with these absolute squiggles. Um, I believe that's written downwards, which is even more confusing. So it's, it's written a bit like Mandarin Chinese or whatever, where they write vertically um so yeah that's even more difficult if you're english like me um yeah not much else to say about that i do wish i knew what he was writing about but um yeah absolutely no chance um and this one came on standard black vinyl um which of course goes very nicely with the black and orange cover very halloweeny again cool shit yeah, go check that out. Vat Galenva by Trahar. Um, check out any of his work, to be honest. Everything I've heard so far and everything I've indeed bought has been absolutely exquisite. Um, so yeah, go and check that out. And finally is an album that, honestly, I didn't think was ever going to come out on vinyl. Um, and I mean, it only came out this year, so I haven't been waiting that long. I should probably stop with my kind of first world problems. But um, yeah, when it came or when it came up on the site, I was thinking, why is it so overpriced? I, I paid through the nose for this goddamn thing, but I was not passing it up either. The album I'm talking about is the brand new full length album. I believe this is their sophomore full length album. Uh, by Ebony Pendant, entitled Ebony Pendant. This is the self-titled. This is black metal, pretty standard black metal, very second wave black metal kind of um, worshipping or inspired at least. Um, I believe this is out of the USA if I haven't made that up completely. This is very riffy. It takes inspiration from like the Swedish scene, the Finnish scene, the Norwegian scene, and kind of packages it all up into one absolutely amazing, amazing album. This is a double LP and it's nearly an hour long, so it's a very extensive album considering it's very straightforward in its kind of execution. Um, I believe this is a one-man band as well. I probably should say that as well. Um, but yeah, if you like black metal riffs, if you just like straightforward black metal, but very, very kind of... Um, purposefully written and performed then this is an absolute must it's just so so good we've got piano sections we've got plenty of like intervals just to break up the chaos we've got blast beats we've got shrieks um and they're kind of croaky almost a little bit in this kind of um vein of a bath at least on his early work um yeah absolutely love this thing man um i'll go into the aesthetics of this package because this is such a good quality um, kind of 
jacket and everything. I can see why it's more expensive. The spine's massive. And it's a gatefold front cover. Shows our guy holding up a pendant with his spikes on. Really goofy cover, but uh, that's just awesome, man. Absolutely love that. Logo is absolutely killer. Um, and that is indeed the name of the album, too. We've got four whole sides of music here. They're the track, that's the track listing, sorry. And we've got um, a little bit of like info and the credits there. And this was put out through ASRAR, ASRAR. Not really sure, I've never actually heard of that label. Um, but yeah, anyway, cool shit. As I say, this is a gatefold and inside it's just a bunch of candles by the looks of it. Um, with a goblet as well. I assume there's blood in there. Oh, there's two goblets. Two lots of blood. Um, yeah, very glossy, so I do apologise if this looks dog shit on the camera. Um, we also, a lot like the Two Mold album, get a poster of the album cover. Love that stuff. And it is not, like, quite as oversized as the Two Mold one, so... No worries if I do want to put it up somewhere, I'm sure I will have space. It also comes with this absolutely gigantic booklet um, with all the lyrics and extra artwork and everything in there. Um, really, really nice. Um, oh, it's two piece, sorry. No, it's not a one man band, I do apologize. Um, lucky I opened it to that page, eh? But uh, yeah, really, really nice. I can see why this was so pricey because it's just such good quality. Um, I believe the record itself is 180 grams as well. Um, yeah, it certainly feels that way. Plain black vinyl, plain labels. Obviously, black metal on black vinyl. Only black vinyl is real for this shit. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased I picked this up. I regret absolutely nothing um, in terms of like, um, yeah, actually getting this one because uh, I, I would regret it if I didn't end up picking it up. Oh, this is one of the best black metal albums of the year, in my opinion. Go and check that out if you haven't already. That's Ebony Pendant with Ebony Pendant. And a shout out as well to Nuclear War Now Records, who sent me this one. They sent me just like a little leaflet that said, Hi, all of these Ebony Pendant double LPs arrived with small corner bends. I've asked the label for some extra jackets, but they won't be here for another few weeks. I should be able to send you a replacement with your next order if needed. Please leave a note in the comments section of your next order to remind us. Sorry for the trouble, but not everyone packs as well as Nuclear War now. Um, I don't know if I got really lucky. Um, that little snippet said all of the um, versions had corner dings, but I seem to have gotten very, very lucky and do not. But... Um, I appreciate that customer service. That is absolutely killer from those guys. Um, and yeah, what an album. Ebony Pendant by Ebony Pendant. Um, that is an absolute essential from 2023. Um, and all of their work so far has been stellar. So yeah, go and check all of that shit out. Hope you just found something cool to listen to there. This vid's gone on slightly longer than I wanted it to, but I suppose I showed an extra record. Um, so um, yeah, more bang for your buck, I guess. Um, as I say, a few kind of well-known albums in there that you should probably have heard of already. A couple of not so much. Um, but yeah, regardless, go and check it out. Hope the rest of your week goes well. Um, not sure when I'll next be back, but I've been kind of keeping a nice routine going uh, throughout this week so far. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll be back fairly soon. Um, I do have another album review kind of in the works, so I will be back very shortly um, with, with a super exciting one. Um, so st uh, stay tuned for that, if I can spit my words out. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what you thought of those albums, uh, if you found anything like new from this vid. Keep your questions coming, comment them on the kind of Q&A vid. Take care as always, enjoy the rest of your goddamn week if I don't see you before then, and I'll catch you in the next one.